13. Blessing and honor and glory be unto him. Blessed are you, O Lord, King of the universe. You have delivered us from sin and death. By your blood, you have brought your people into your kingdom.
grace to you and peace from him who is and who, is, who was and who is this to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his Father and God. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So be it. Amen. I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who was and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise
But this morning, we might want to reconsider this notion of dual realities. Perhaps we might consider an alternative understanding, one that is slightly different, but one with major significance. Rather than saying that heaven and earth are two totally different spheres of reality, what I think Jesus might be saying here is that if he and his followers were of this world, that is, if they followed the world's ways, then yes, naturally, they would be using the primary tools available to them, namely, violence. But Jesus is not of this world, meaning he does not interact and react in ways of the world. Rather, Jesus has come into the world to witness to a profound truth, the truth of God's sacrificial and giving love. Jesus comes to usher in this reality, not by force, not by political rule, not by earthly means, but by compassion, by forgiveness, and by reconciliation. I think this is perhaps what Jesus means when he says that this, his kingdom is not of this world. He will not use earthly ways. He will not demand obedience through political coercion or through military might. He will not demand loyalty or fealty or subjugation. But my divine truth comes to win hearts and minds to the kingdom. I wonder... Might this as a message be what we really need to hear, especially on this particular Christ the King Sunday, especially in the wake of the terrorist attacks in Paris, especially when radical extremists want to intimidate, kill, and destroy all in the name of God. Especially when we consider the hateful language being used and fear-mongering being bantied around by political pundits. Especially when we as a society seem to be hell-bent on arming ourselves to the teeth while proclaiming that it is some sort of Christian value. You know, we tend to understand God by the way that we perceive and experience our world. So we live in a world steeped in violence. It's easy to see God as being pretty uptight, pretty angry, and perhaps even violent. But Jesus came to show us a different point of view, and he himself demonstrated that point of view when he himself was attacked. Even then, he would not retaliate with the normal means that we so often tend to use. I'm mindful of that all great hymn. He could have called 10,000 angels. He could have called upon the minions of heaven to come and fight. He could have called his followers to take up arms, but Jesus did not do that. You know, I almost lost it when I read a political pundit recently infer that Jesus might not have been crucified if he had only been allowed to carry a gun. Newsflash, boys and girls, Peter did have a sword, remember? And Peter used it. And Jesus told him to put that sword away because, and I'm quoting here from Matthew, all who take the sword will perish. By the sword. Sisters and brothers, I have to admit to you that I grow weary with the way that Christian faith has been hijacked by mean and hate-filled people. Amen? Amen? Some have come promoting a Christianity that is so contorted and twisted that it is antithetical to the very truth that Jesus came to preach and teach. 
and I am frustrated that some of them actually want to create a theocracy, a government that unites earthly ways with their distorted view of Christianity. That terrifies me. How about you? Yes. That's not the kind of kingdom that Jesus came to proclaim. Amen? Amen. That's not what he came to say, especially in our reading, especially on this Christ the King Sunday. The truth and the power of the cross, sisters and brothers, is not that it stands as a rallying symbol of war, but rather that it stands as a symbol of self-giving and sacrificial love. Yes, Jesus was in the world, but Jesus is not of the world. And because he is not of this world, those who recognize the truth will also refuse to interact and react using the ways of the world. Those who are in the world, but who listen to his voice, will refuse to bring about his kingdom through violence. Because to do so would violate the very principle of the kingdom Jesus proclaims. Sisters and brothers, it would be very easy to fall into the trap of using whatever tool we have at hand. It would be easy to fall into all patterns of retribution, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and the bigger the bomb, the better. But just consider this. What has that way of doing things gotten us in the last 15 years of war? How is that working for us so far? Has it really transformed the world into a more peaceful, more loving place? Or is it more violent and more angry and more turbulent? Are we more secure and stable than we were before? We live in a world dominated by the view that the only answer to violence is more violence. The end of that, it results in death. Jesus says, I came to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What truth are you listening to today? On this Christ the King Sunday, who is it that you are paying attention to? Who is it that deserves your allegiance? Which master will you pledge to serve this coming year? The one that wields all the power in this world, or the one who speaks the truth, <coughs> calling us to simple, sacrificial service. As we live, both earthly and heavenly dominions exist. But in the end, only one will triumph. Which one? Which one deserves our tribute? Which one deserves our loyalty, our fidelity? 2016, to which realm will you dedicate your time, your efforts, your skills, your abilities, your gifts? Which one will you strive the hardest to support? My prayer is that we will hear the voice of the one who calls us to a better way. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was his 
parted of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray to our God through Jesus Christ, King of kings and ruler of the rulers of earth. Please kneel as you are able to our presiding bishop, Rick our bishop, Dwayne our presbyter, and Ray our deacon. For this holy gathering and for the people of God in every place, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority, and for mercy, justice, and peace among all peoples, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For good weather, abundant fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For our city and those who live in it, and for our families, companions, and all those we love, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For all those in danger and need, the hungry and the thirsty, strangers and the naked, the sick, especially Merle Wil Wilma, Saul Smith, Ted Holtz, Wayne Pruitt, Terry Geisland, Susan Schlesinger, and Carleen Sanchez. And those in prison, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For those who rest in Christ, including Bishop Marty Martin, and for all the dead, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, we pray. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for Joyce Lynch and Jeffrey Valentine, who will celebrate their birthdays this week, we pray. Lord, have mercy. Lifting our voices with all creation, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O oh Lord, God of all peoples, nations, and languages, who is and who was and who is to come, hear the prayers we offer this day and enable us to serve you as faithful priests in your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us call to mind our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you.
come from you, O God, and, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. And Rising 
again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the apostles, with all the saints, with all the faithful who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and